Hi, I'm Don Carr, and today I'm going to look at what's brilliant about the Sultans of Swing guitar solo. Sultans of Swing is a treasure trove of great guitar licks and moments. However, if they existed without a great song and performance, all that great guitar playing may never have been heard or possibly even conceived. I mean, it takes a great platform to play over, and Sultans definitely delivers that. Good basic groove, interesting chord changes, a unique vocal that draws you in, and a memorable hook line. Mark Knopfler's musical control of the guitar is perfect. He uses different articulations, dynamics, accents, slides, bends, double and triple stop licks, and the fast stuff never feels gratuitous. Everything he plays makes the song feel better. I mean, it serves the song. Even when he uses the same notes, he finds a way to play them differently so it never feels repetitious. The guitar fills in the verse are a nice call and response to the vocal, and they set the expectation for the solos. When he takes a solo, it's seamless, like the guitar fills are just kind of taken over. Both solos in the song stand on their own as statements, but use a different approach from each other. The first solo is very patient, uses legato connected phrases that outline the chord changes and slow bends that really sing. The whole solo is melodic and memorable, as much a part of the song as the vocal. By contrast, the second solo starts with short bursts that eventually become more connected. It uses faster rhythms based on 16th notes that build to the arpeggio sequence at the end of the solo. That is classic solo construction. I'm playing my trusty Red Strat through a Fender Tone Master Twin. Mark Knopfler plays this song without a pick. I'll be hybrid picking with the picking fingers. Let's look at each phrase. They're basically one and two bar phrases with appropriate rests that follow the chord progression. Now, the first one is mostly eighth notes, so it feels more like the rest of the song. It's over D minor to B flat. The second phrase moves a little bit more, as a few 16th notes, it's mostly over the C chord. The third phrase is a little more active, back to the D minor over B flat. And the fourth phrase introduces the arpeggio idea, it's over the C chord. The fifth phrase starts to build intensity. He digs in dynamically, and it's rhythmically quick. The sixth phrase is the climb to the ending. It's got muted grace notes that are a little bit hard to distinguish, but based on the fact that he's playing around the chords so well, I'm guessing that the muted 16th note triplets are a C triad, and it ends with a really cool bend lick. Anyway, here's my interpretation. And the pinnacle is the arpeggio licks. Now, part of what makes them sound so great is the way they're offset rhythmically. Since the top note of each arpeggio is the downbeat, they all have a two note pickup or anticipation, except for the first one that actually does start with the top note on the downbeat. And finally, he uses a phrase that starts with a high bend and ends with a walk down over the C chord and back to the main lick. I highly encourage you to learn as much of this song as you can. It's a bunch of lessons about solo building, using rhythm and rest to build tension, different articulation, and it's full of useful licks, great phrasing, and killer tone. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you got some insight on what makes a great solo and some ideas for your own solos. If you have any questions about guitar gear, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or check us out at sweetwater.com. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Thank you.